All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning. I'm Gunmala Kapoor. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to hold bilateral talks today with Swedish King Karl XVI Gustav. Today is the last date for withdrawal of nominations for the fourth phase of polls in Jharkhand. Intensified Mission Indra Dhanush, IMI2, aiming at immunizing children and women to be launched across the country. Heavy rain disrupts normal life in Tamil Nadu and Puducherry. In wrestling, Gurpreet Singh and Sunil Kumar clinch gold medals in the Senior National Championships at Jalandhar. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will hold talks with King Karl XVI Gustav of Sweden in New Delhi today. The two leaders are likely to discuss bilateral and multilateral issues of mutual interest. The Swedish king and Queen Sylvia arrived in New Delhi this morning on a five-day visit to India. The king will also meet President Ramnath Kovind. External Affairs Minister S. J. Shankar will also call on the Swedish king. Several agreements on furthering bilateral engagements are likely to be signed between the two countries. The Swedish king is leading a high-level business delegation for engagements with Indian counterparts. The delegation will hold meetings with Indian industry leaders in Delhi and Mumbai. The ties between India and Sweden have been on an upward trend in the last few years. Bilateral trade volume was 3.37 billion US dollars in 2018. A report. India is Sweden's third largest trade partner in Asia after China and Japan. Mutual economic interests in areas including manufacturing, clean tech and healthcare among others are driving trade relations between both the countries. During Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Stockholm in 2018, a joint action plan as well as a joint declaration on Sweden-India Innovation Partnership for a Sustainable Future was signed. Apart from Delhi, the royal couple is scheduled to visit Mumbai and Uttarakhand. This is King Gustav's third visit to India. Ajay Deskripo. In Jharkhand, today is the last date for withdrawal of nomination papers for the fourth phase of polls, which will be held on the 16th of this month. A total of 230 candidates have filed their nominations in 15 constituencies. Campaigning for the second and third phases has intensified. 20 constituencies will go to the polls in the second phase on the 7th of this month. Polling for 17 constituencies spread over 8 districts will be held in the third phase on the 12th of this month. Star campaigners from different political parties are holding election rallies and public meetings in support of their candidates. BJP President and Union Home Minister Amit Shah will address two election rallies in Chakradharpur and Beharagora today in Singhbhum region. Senior Congress leader Rahul Gandhi will hold a public meeting in Simdega. Jharkhand Mukti Morcha Working President Hemant Soren, Jharkhand Vikas Morcha Chief Babu Lal Marandi and the All Jharkhand Students Union President Sudesh Kumar Mehto will also canvass in support of their candidates. Our correspondent has filed a report on the ongoing election campaign. Addressing election rally in Adityapur, senior BJP leader Rajnath Singh said National Citizenship Register NRC would be implemented in the entire country. Senior leader of Jharkhand Mukti Morcha, Heman Soren said his party will provide 75% reservation for local residents in the private companies. State in charge of Congress, RPN Singh criticized BJP for rising unemployment in the state. Jharkhand Vikas Morcha President Babulal Marandi raised the issue of exodus of youths of the state for employment. Dharmendra Kumar Rai, AIR News, Ranchi. The center will launch the intensified Mission Indra Dhanush, IMI2, across the country today. The government's flagship scheme is aimed at immunizing children under the age of two years and pregnant women against eight vaccine-preventable diseases. The IMI covers vaccines for diphtheria, whooping cough, tetanus, polio, tuberculosis, measles, meningitis and hepatitis B. Vaccines for Japanese encephalitis and haemophilus influenza are also being provided in selected areas. IMI2 aims to achieve the targets of full immunization coverage in 272 districts spread across 27 states. IMI2 will be carried out between December 2019 and March 2020. Union Health Minister Dr. Harshwardhan appealed to people to get their children immunized. जो भी समाज में देश के बारे में 
सोसाइटी के बारे में गहराई और गंभीरता से सोचता है उन सबसे मैं कहना चाहता हूं कि अपने अपने तरीके से आप कृपया इस संदेश को भारी पैमाने पर बड़े पैमाने पर इसको फैलाएं और एक भी बच्चा इस बार हमारा देश में जो वैक्सीन टीके के अभाव में वंचित न रहे In October 2017, Prime Minister Narendra Modi had launched the IMI. The intensified mission under Dhunash will be rolled out in 35 districts of Uttar Pradesh. More from our correspondent. Under the program, the immunization activity will be in four rounds over seven working days, excluding the regular immunization days, Sundays and holidays. First round starts today, while next rounds will be in January, February and March months, and will cover 425 blocks of 73 districts of state. Health Minister of State Jay Pratap Singh said that under the program, around 66,000 sessions will be organized for vaccination of more than 5.5 lakh children and around 1.3 lakh pregnant women of state. Sushil Chandra Tiwari. AIR News Lucknow This is All India Radio giving you the news For quick news updates visit our news on AIR app and follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts You can also visit our website www.newsonair.com In Jammu and Kashmir security forces have busted a terror hideout in Dalri forest of Rafiabad in Baramulla district In a joint search operation the 32nd Rashtra Rifles Special Operation Group Rafiabad and the 92nd Battalion of the CRPF busted the hideout on specific information they recovered a huge cache of arms and ammunition including two AK47 rifles 2000 rounds of ammunition wireless sets and some clothing recruitment of special police officers spos by the jammu and kashmir police has invoked a good response from the aspiring youth across the union territory 77641 youth applied for the 5200 posts of spos the physical tests for these posts have been conducted across the kashmir valley and the final process of recruitment is in progress In Kashmir zone 26594 aspiring youth came forward and applied for recruitment. Punjab Chief Minister Amarinder Singh made it clear that devotees applying online to visit Kartarpur Sahib in Pakistan are not being charged facilitation fee by seva kendras as set up by the state government. In a statement he said anyone asked to pay any fee should inform his office directly. He asserted that the application process was totally free of cost. The 7th edition of Exercise Mitra Shakti amongst the armies of India and Sri Lanka commenced at the Aunt military station in Pune yesterday. The exercise is aimed at enhancing interoperability and operational efficiency amongst both armies. The defense ministry said the objective of the exercise is to build and promote positive relations between the armies of both countries. The focus of the exercise will be on sub-unit level training on counter-insurgency and counter-terrorism operations in urban and rural environments. The joint training exercise also signifies the strength of India-Sri Lanka relations in the field of military operations and engagement. The Indian Meteorological Department, the IMD, has forecast heavy rain in Tamil Nadu and Puducherry during the next 24 hours. Authorities have closed schools and colleges in Tiruvallur, Tuttigudi and Ramanathapuram districts today. A holiday has also been declared for schools in Chengalpattu, Kanchipuram, Kadalur and Chennai. All schools in Puducherry will remain closed today due to heavy rain in the region. Many parts of Chennai received heavy rain yesterday due to the northeast monsoon. The Met Office has advised fishermen not to venture into the sea at Cape Comorin and the Lakshadweep areas as gusty winds are likely to occur due to the presence of a depression in the Arabian Sea. A report. Widespread rainfall in the state has increased water levels in reservoirs in many districts, especially those which supply water to the dry capital. State Disaster Management Authority are in constant vigil to maintain water levels and to take precautionary steps to avert sudden flooding. Educational institutions in more than 8 districts have been closed for the day and university exams have been postponed as the rains are bound to continue. Chief Minister Edapadi Parnichami will take a meeting today to discuss the situation arising out of the heavy downpour prevalent in the state. Joy, AIA News, Chennai. People can contact the fire and rescue services at telephone number 101 at all the district headquarters including the Greater Chennai Corporation areas. 
For the first time in the history of the Hornbill Festival, the Bureau of Outreach and Communication, Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, is organizing a multimedia exhibition commemorating the 150th birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. Nagaland Chief Minister Nefu Rio officially inaugurated the multimedia exhibition yesterday at the World War II Museum. The News Services Division of All India Radio, in its weekly bilingual live phone-in program, Public Speak, will bring you a discussion tonight on initiatives taken to empower differently abled persons. This can be heard on the FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies from 9.30 p.m. Listeners can ask questions from the experts in our studio on toll-free telephone number 1-800-115767. You can also ask questions on telephone number 011-2331-4444 and post queries on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts by hashtag AskAIR. You can also follow us on the news on AIR app for updates. This program is also available on Doordarshan DTH. In wrestling, Asian Championship silver medalist Gurpreet Singh and Sunil Kumar clinched gold medals on the final day of the Senior National Championships at Jalandhar yesterday. Gurpreet defeated two times World Junior Championships medalist Sajan Bhanwal, who was representing the railways by a 3-1 margin in the 77-kilogram category. This was the Punjab Rappler's fourth senior national title. Sunil also managed an easy win over Punjab's Prabhal. Enjoying the home support, Punjab's Harpreet Singh, Asian Games silver medalist, defeated Rajbir Chikara of the Railways 4-1 in the 82-kilogram category final. Railways finished on the top with 210 points ahead of the services and Charkhand. Defending champions, Indian men's volleyball team will clash with Pakistan in the final of the 13th South Asian Games tomorrow. Yesterday, India defeated Sri Lanka by 3-1 in a thrilling first semi-final in Kathmandu. There was a neck-to-neck competition between the two teams in the second semi-final. Pakistan beat Bangladesh. The Indian women's team was already reached the final, defeated the Maldives on Saturday. Indian girls will clash with host Nepal in the final tomorrow. Nepal defeated Sri Lanka in the semi-finals. A report. 13 South Asian Games started with a glittering opening ceremony at historic Dashrath Rangashala in Kathmandu last evening. The Games had started from this stadium in 1984. A fireworks and a spectacular laser show depicting participating countries and competitions were one of the main attractions of the inaugural ceremony. Though volleyball started from Wednesday, but competitions in other 25 games will begin from today. Besides Kathmandu, events will also be held at Pokhara and Janakpur. Over 2,700 athletes will have tough competition for 1,100 119 medals, including 319 gold, during the biggest sporting extravaganza of South Asia. Rajkumar, AIR News, Kathmandu. And now for an overview of today's newspapers, it's over to Paul Thornton. Thank you, Gunmala. GST collections rebound in November, exceed rupees 1 lakh crore, three-month cycle of slum broken as demand seen reviving headlines in the Hindustan Times. According to experts, in order to have a comfortable fiscal position, the government needs an average monthly collection of at least 1 lakh crore rupees by way of GST. Private telecom players, high rates, prepaid users to be hit is the top Hindu headline. The era of low tariffs for India's consumer seems to have ended as major tele companies Vodafone, Bharati Airtel Limited and Reliance Geo have increased tariffs by up to 40% for prepaid customers. The Indian Express writes that the report of the Justice V.K. Agarwal Inquiry Commission, which found no evidence to support claims by security forces that the 17 people killed in an alleged encounter in Bijapur in 2012 were Maoists, will be tabled in the Chhattisgarh Assembly. And with that, it's back to you, Gunmala. Thank you, Paul. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to hold bilateral talks today with Swedish King Karl XVI Gustav. Today is the last date for withdrawal of nominations for the fourth phase of polls in Jharkhand. Intensified mission Indra Dhanush, IMI2, aiming at immunizing children and women to be launched across the country. Heavy rain disrupts normal life in Tamil Nadu and Puducherry. And in wrestling, Gurpreet Singh and Sunil Kumar clinch gold medals in the senior national championships at Jalandhar. And with that we end the morning news. Have a nice day.